Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, let's address something right off the bat. I murdered my beard. What have I done? Let this be a lesson to you that when you go to use your beard trimmer that you check what the setting is before you use it. But yes, you guys are here for the Supernatural Season 5 review. One more thing just before. If any of you guys have wondered what the, the hat and the sweater are, this is Yukon Built. This is a fantastic clothing company from the Yukon. I will be talking about them at the end of the video, so make sure to stay tuned for that bit. So we have finally come to Supernatural Season 5's ending. We have come to a close with this season, and it was such a blast to review it, rewatch it, and talk about it with you guys. So this is gonna be my review, talking about the season overall. I've rewatched all of my reviews, listened to my points, and I've also got the score here, so let's get that out of the way with first. And by point score, it beats season four. It gets an 82%, which is a barely crossing the line A. This is 126 points out of 154 in terms of my rating scores out of seven. And to be honest, this isn't exactly a surprise considering the caliber that season five is has been held to and still retains this season is the accumulation of everything that has come before season one two even three especially four and it all comes to this final climax the destinies of both dean winchester and sam winchester come to a head and the literal judo christian apocalypse this massive build-up to an ending that still holds up as probably the best episode that this show ever created it is the best episode that it ever created i had a 22 minute essay talking about it. if you guys haven't watched that yet I have a link it right here. Supernatural came to a close here, and this is a part where a lot of people kind of have a sort of a discouraging kind of afterthought about this because everything that comes after season five clearly does not have the connectivity, the connecting seasons that this show would have for the first five seasons because literally from the words of people who have worked on the show after season five they didn't know if they were going to get another season until about halfway so they had to write each season with the idea that it could end but also continue but they only could really find that out until they were filming roughly the last two or three episodes so that's a major pain in the ass when you're coming across from a creative standpoint season five overall has some of the best villains has some of the best character arcs has some of the best episodes it even has some of the best one-offs one take villains one take jokes one take humor episodes all some of them being the curious case of dean winchester is still probably one of the best not 100% story related episodes but kind of one of a one-off but it still is in my opinion one of the best ones they ever did but there are very few one-off episodes in this season because really technically speaking you could say that fallen idols curious case of dean winchester uh sam interrupted and swap me are really the only not story related episodes everything else in this season is story related over 17 of them are 100 percent story related and that has to do with lucifer coming onto the plane being played expertly by mark pelleringo bringing about the apocalypse in which dean is supposed to say yes to michael and have this big battle of all battles that will destroy half the earth and well that came about in later seasons but it was not as advertised but thankfully one of the best parts about this season is that it isn't just relying off of what came before it is establishing its own criteria it is establishing its own merits just purely on the quality of the episodes that come from this in terms of episodes that people talk about there's a lot in this season obviously i believe the children are a future with the jesse antichrist kid that never came back he's still one of the most talked about aspects of supernatural lore that has never been answered we got changing channels being a fan fan favorite abandon all hope in the end being some of the most depressing but such well-written hard-hitting episodes we have a terminator reference episode where the song remains the same my bloody valentine is probably one of my favorite episodes of this season of the show in its entirety we got a fantastic interpretation of heaven there's kind of this david lynch sort of out of the box sort of turns of how they are proceeding through heaven i thought that was really well done especially with a budget like this and you got two minutes to midnight with a fantastic introduction of death probably one of the best character introductions that the show ever did and then finally swan song which is still regarded by me and others and 
most generally the majority of the community as the best episode that Supernatural ever produced. Are there some detractors from this season? Very, very finite, but there are some in this season, particularly being Swap Meet. I just don't like this episode. It's the most useless episode in this entire season. I really wish that they could have contributed either more to Anna, because while Anna's turn is done well, it does kind of come off as sudden. I wish they had more time to establish her. I kind of wish that there was maybe a little bit more time with Pestilence. There's a lot of things that that episode in particular could have been replaced with to further establish a lot of the story-related elements in this season. It is what it is. They had to have one easy episode in this season, considering the production value of the show just went through the roof for this season, and I don't think it ever reached the same height again, at least in terms of practical stuff, maybe visual effects later on, but this season still just stands out as the accumulation of everything that Supernatural fans had been going over, studying, becoming invested in. It's a great payoff. It's a fantastic finale for those who stopped watching it here, and it also is a great continuation for those who would continue on watching. It's a landmark in terms of Supernatural history, and I just absolutely adore this season. Is it one of the most rewatchable ones in terms of just, hey, I'm gonna watch this season? I would say not so much because of how much it is story related. I feel that maybe season three is way more rewatchable to me, even though it is about Dean dying. Season two was a classic season for me. It's one of my most watched seasons. I think it is the, pretty much the most watched season of the show for me, but that's because my brother and I watch that season over and over and over and over again. And also there is the detractor of the fact that, you know, after this season ends, you have to continue on and keep going. And while I am looking forward to talking about season six with you guys, it is a little bit of a strange gray zone for me because it's just, I don't know, I'm kind of going into this with the same kind of uncertainty that I did 10 years ago, essentially. But in the case of Supernatural season five, technically speaking, because of the percentage points, it would be a 6 out of 7. But, but, because this is the pillar season, this is the pinnacle of this show. It is the standout, the grandiose, the goat of Supernatural. It has to get the recognition that it deserves. And I am going to give season 5 a 7 out of 7. Honestly, there isn't another rating I could give it because of how good this season is, because of how important it is, how respectful it is to the fans, how much it respects its lore, where it came from, and what it had to do to get here. Season 5 gets a 7 out of 7, hands down, best season that the show ever made. Is it one of the ones that is the most rewatchable? Possibly, maybe not so for some, but in terms of quality, it is the best season that Supernatural ever made. I haven't reviewed season 6 to 10 yet, but I'm kind of doubting that we're going to get into that same category, but we'll see because I know a lot of people really like season 8. But before I read you guys' comments, I just wanted to talk about these guys here. Yukon Built is a clothing apparel store from Whitehorse, Yukon. It's a territory above British Columbia here in Canada. And if you guys ever want a sweater that is really good material, has a pretty simplistic but very nice looking apparel kind of design on it, and it keeps you warm in the cold. I would 100% recommend Yukon Built, especially their sweaters. I love this hat design. Admittedly, it does have uh, the fleece in the back, so it's not a proper hat, but I can't wear the switchbacks that most people wear because my noggin's too big. I still love this hat. It's a great hat. Anyways, if you guys are interested in buying any of their stuff or checking out their store just in general, I've put a link in the description below. I'll probably be doing a little bit more of a video talking about them in the next few days. Anyways, now let's read you guys' comments and let's see what you guys had to say about Season 5. Okay, here we are, Season 5. I think besides Watch Mojo, everyone considers it this the best season, and I completely agree. To me, the best season of Supernatural are the ones that are filled to the brim with plot, like Season 2, Season 4, Season 8, Season 9, Season 11. Although the seasons I mentioned are great in their own right, I think it's pretty safe to say that Season 5 handled the story and the characters and the action best. From the beginning, we are instantly thrown into the action, as well as some heavy-hitting drama. Sam... Seeing Sam witnessing the fallout of his actions is just riveting. This is how you make the audience relate to your hero by keep hitting them to the ground again and again. So when he gets back up again and overcomes his mistakes and failures, we can't help but be there and cheer for them. That's exactly good storytelling. The best aspect of your characters are their flaws and them overcoming their flaws. If they have no flaws, if they have no weaknesses, if they have no 
kind of negative traits about them, then they're very unrelatable. You can't relate to them. Even if they are a superhero, they should still have some faults, and that further builds the connection between you and the character. The relationship between the two brothers in this season is broken, and on top of facing the apocalypse, they also have to regain the trust of, for each other again. Many seasons later on have attempted to replicate this scenario, some much better at it, like season 8 and season 11, and some really bad, like season 7 and every single dab season. The reason why season 5 worked the best was because A, it was the first time done, ah, technically season 4 had it, like it, it came to the brim in season 4, but season 5 is the execution of it, so I'll give you that. B, both brothers had the most legitimate reasons to be at odds with each other. I completely understood where Dean was coming from, and I completely understand Sam's frustration with himself and also Dean's close off nature to him. So when they eventually forgive each other by the end, that is why it is so emotional to see Dean being beaten up by his brother despite not giving up on him. It makes me cry every time. 100%. That's my favorite part of Swan Song. The idea that these guys would continually lie, keep secrets, not trust each other in latter seasons just never made any sense to me. I never understood it. I thought it was the dumbest writing and I thought they were just going off of stuff that just kind of was like, okay, why are we doing this again? Season 8's a little bit different because it's about the gates of hell, right? So that's a little bit more, but then when Sam gets taken over by the angel in season 9, I just thought, I was like, why are we doing this? This is so stupid. On top of the brilliant drama, I didn't even mention the excellent writing behind the scenarios and adversaries the brothers face. First, the Horsemen of the Apocalypse, what a unique enemy with that we unfortunately never see again. One, Each one with their own power and different personality. Then the whole Horror of Babylon, Rachel Miner is Meg, Crowley, Zachariah, and of course Satan himself, played to perfection by Mark Pellerengo. Jared, although Jared did a good job, and I love Misha's impression in season 11, yes he is awesome, sue me, Mark as Lucifer gave us one of the most menacing and calculating villains in TV fantasy shows. He embodies the role in every scene and he is in, and it's baffling to me that he left a bigger impression in direction and production value, wait, left a bigger impression in just a few episodes than when he was a season regular, or series regular. All these things mentioned are a testament to the writing, direction, and production value of the show at the time. And this combination, above all, is why season five is the best directed, best acted, and the most epic season the show ever gave us. It's the accumulation of the biblical apocalypse and the most epic arc in the show. Now I know that I'm the young guy that came in late to this channel, so I don't know how seriously people take me, but hopefully you understand at least my perspective on this season and the continuation of the show. Don't I don't consider the rest of the seasons, at least until season 11, as fan fiction, nor will I ever discredit them. Maybe it's just because uh, that I am a young 20 year old that binged the show recently in my life and didn't grow up with it, but I didn't don't like uh, trashing the good stuff, just relevant to my point. Or just because it's not as good as what came before. I made the comic book comparison before, but I really think that it is relevant to my, uh, to my point. Season 1 through 5 of the arc of the Biblical Apocalypse, the biggest arc for the show ever had like Marvel's Infinity Saga and Season 6 to 11 are a different arc, the continuation of the battle between Heaven and Hell, leading up to the Universal Apocalypse in Season 11, kind of like... Uh, Marvel's kind of like Marvel's phase four if you see the first five seasons as an arc and the next six seasons as another arc Then you'll enjoy them better Jeremy Carver found a way to make the continuation of the show relevant and even merge the biblical and universal Apocalypse into one of my favorite episodes of season 11 Both he and Sarah Gamble deserve major props for their efforts because they took something that Robert Singer wanted to milk and cared enough to give them their own spin and add more to it when others, like a certain showrunner after them, would just give up. I understand the hardcore fans and where they're coming from, but to me season 5 is not the ending of the show, but just the ending of the arc. Season 6 to 11 is probably the best kind of arc you could do when you're not really realizing what you're going to do, because <laughs> you don't, you won't have any kind of confirmation of what you are able to do or where you're able to confirm or continue with that. Eric Kripke once said, I've always said at the beginning of every single season of the show when I was running the show in the writer's room. This is the last season, so let's smoke him if we got him. It's very evident that season 5 was Eric Kripke giving all, uh, giving his all to a satisfying story for the fifth season. Throughout his endeavors of do doing other shows, I don't think anything will ever come to being as widely received as Supernatural season 5. Or Supernatural. Season 5 certainly tackled the Judo-Christian uh, on tight a budget for a basic cable TV show. 
But what made it so successful and impacting will always be the characters more than the stories itself. It certainly makes Sam and Dean larger than life to be vessels to bring the, about the final battle that would end the world, but it's amazing how this season tied in with the Winchester mythology overall with God and his two children, Michael and Lucifer. It's not until season 11 do we get a spiritual successor to season 5 of, of biblical storytelling. Season 5 will always remain my second favorite season, mainly because of how expertly it made me sympathize with Lucifer. It personified the Four Horsemen, characterized God. It's refreshing to see Sam and Dean uh, come together at the best when they needed to, uh, needed each other, the the more the most in, in impossible odds that would only result of them making choices that would take them away from each other to preserve humanity. Because we see in seasons later on, they only really make the self-sacrifice choices in the season finales later on in seasons 6, 7, 9, 11, and 13, and the other seasons involve them fighting against the greater good by their selfish choices that impact the world and later on the multiverse of Supernatural. Now, there was a lot more of a connection in terms of how the brothers and their own relations to the main plot. It, it just coincided very well, whereas uh, whatever plot was going on after season five, they had to make the brothers fighting each other just because they needed to be tension and it felt very very forced a lot of the time for me i absolutely love season five and it's definitely the best season in the show's history and for a good reason it successfully is because of the character arcs and for both sam and dean to me dean ending up walking away from the hunter life and living with ben and lisa instead of dying as a hunter was well earned because dean didn't feel like he deserved it for so long he was a soldier for john's revenge against the demon who killed his wife always being the good son plus he lost his childhood that night and was forced to be a father and a mother to sam as and as for sam this season he had to face the pain and anger from the past hiding out fi finding out that demons have been messing with his life for years and having to give up his dream of wanting to have a normal life while, and willing to sacrifice himself to put Lucifer in the cage, even though it's a sad ending, it will be a great one. Yeah, it definitely did come full circle here. It sort of reminds me of Buffy's fifth season for some reason. I actually haven't seen the fifth season of, of Buffy, but I know what happens at the end of uh, season five because my wife has watched the show. So I know where you're coming from there, and I, I will eventually get around to watching more than just the first two seasons of Buffy. Supernatural Season 5 is the accumulation of the, all the storytelling before it and the perfect book ending uh, end to the series if you so choose. Eric Kripke and the whole team are firing on all cylinders, bringing the air, their A game. From the jump of the season, you feel the weight carried over from the last season and in, in being the apocalypse, it all kind of feels like it's all uh, feel like as though the season goes on. The thing that for me that makes this season shine is the light brighter, uh, the light bringer himself, Lucifer. Thanks to Mark Pellerino and his stellar performance, Lucifer never really feels like a mustache twirling villain, but some one you can sympathize with at times. Lucifer is treated with care, and the show does a great job of making him feel totally menacing and unkillable, all the while having an all-knowing vibe to him. Similar to Lucifer DC property comic, not the horrendous show, Lucifer doesn't seem to lie, and that and a thing that is explored in the comic that I personally put to uh, um, to this iteration of the character as well, as it's that being God's favorite son, it doesn't matter if he has the power or not, he's got the stuff to come out on top regardless of the situation. Lucifer becoming a sympathetic character and doing the silver tongue, coercing you, trying to make you kind of side with him was the best part about this character. It's the best part about villain characters. If you can relate to them, if their plot is heinous, but there is a reasonable reason behind it, it's always great to have those kind of pull and tug villains. But unfortunately, Lucifer would just become a goddamn joke after this season, in my honest opinion. He, season 11, he skates by, but then afterwards, he just becomes a joke. I think his most powerful weapon, besides being able to snap his fingers and explore be explode beings, is his silver tongue. He doesn't need to punch or beat you because he can just persuade you by talking and see you... Uh, you see this multiple times over the season where he moves people like chess pieces and it comes to a head in the finale when he gets Sam to say yes to him, even though he knows the plan. It's an interesting vibe to this season. I remember it being... I remember it best from watching week to week as it aired and that the element of hopelessness. From Abandon All Hope onwards, I feels like that... It feels like that, just truly hopeless. As each episode passes from that uh, from that one I feel with Dean, and it is said best by Joshua in Dark Side of the Moon, you can't kill the devil and you're losing faith. Rem I remember vividly thinking to myself, I don't think they will be able to kill Lucifer, and I kind of don't want them to. 
Castiel playing the fish out of water in this season is priceless, and Misha does a fan amazing job as this character. It is obvious why he became a mainstay in the series, even if they run out of good storylines for him after a while. Bobby being confined to a wheelchair in this season is heartbreaking as he holds a special place in probably most of the fan base's heart. Crowley is a very welcome addition to the season, and I kind of wish we saw him before the season because he is so good. The boys are always uh, killing it, proving that Jared and Jensen are just these characters. I could go on in praising the season. It tied for my favorite season with season four, and this show and these characters will always be with me. I give this season a whole seven out of seven for me, and it is the true finale of the series. I still want to know how cra uh, CW is so crazy to renew Riverdale almost every time. Honestly, Riverdale season one and two were good and the rest are just a shit thrown on the wall and they say, well, let's do witchcraft with Ninja Turtles attached. Honestly, I don't know why uh, CW renews uh, Riverdale. On the other hand, Supernatural season five really indeed was the perfect ending to the show and they, couldn't, and they could have ended it here that it got renewed and I don't think it's necessary that Supernatural was bad after season 5 because recent seasons are not uh, uh, not bad at all. I enjoyed season 7 but I do agree it's a bad season. I enjoyed seasons 8 to 12. Thank God season 12 was the last good Andrew Dabb created. I feel like Dabb could have asked the CW on ending the series with season 12 if he could and I remember reading an article on Looper or something saying that Kripke sued Warner Brothers and Dad because they tried to steal the show from him in 2017. Oh, I did not know that. You can see the close connection uh, Kripke had with Sarah and with Jeremy Carver because he helped them. I still would like to know how Kripke would have ended the series in season 5 and what his ending would have been in season 15. I did not know that about the Kripke thing, but now that kind of makes sense in terms of Kripke's lacking involvement with the show later on. Like. He really stepped away after Carver because he would come in and write a few episodes here and there during the Sarah Gamble era. Like, I think he wrote the, se the season finale of season six, if I'm correct. Supernatural season five is, in my opinion, the best season the show ever produced. The perfect accumulation to a se five season arc. The show managed to be believably uh, to to believably transition from a story about finding a missing father to a story about stopping Lucifer and the apocalypse while making it feel like the same show we all fell in love with in the first season. I can't say the same about the post Kripke era. Season 11 is great though. That is a very good point too. The transition of how this show just evolved is so flawless in terms of where it started to where it would end in season 5. As a massive TV buff who prefers a good series to a movie, Season 5 of Supernatural is one of my favorite pieces of television of all time. The fact that CW show, wi uh, uh, widely criticized for being a childish show for teenage girls, managed to pull off such a masterful story arc on such a small budget compared to similar quality dramas and still stay so under the radar outside of the fan base is incredible to me. It's perfectly paced, has wonderful writing, is funny, epic, sad, and just everything you could ever ask for in a good story. It's really unfortunate the showrunners trashed their reputation so much after this. In my ideal world, the show would have continued on and reworked uh, the versions of season 8 to 11 to fit into the continuity and quality wise and ended with Chuck and Amara leaving Earth and Dean looking at Mary in the field but unfortunately we well we got everything else. Uh, still defend season 13 though it's underrated even if it's messy. But anyways as someone who's been watching since your f season 1 finale congrats on me for making it this far. It took a while. You deserve a break, especially with what comes next. Keep it up, and I'm genuinely, uh, and I can genuinely see you turning into a legitimately big, well-known online film and television reviewer in the vein of stick Chris Stuckman, Jeremy Jones, Dan Muller, Flickpick, etc. You deserve it for sure. Good luck with the show slumps years. I'm sure all the negative reviews will be very entertaining. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. That's very, uh, that's very encouraging. Thank you, Jacob. I actually don't know who Dan Muller, uh, Muller? I'm very bad at pronouncing names. We'll have to check that name out. I think that season five flowed effortlessly and organically towards his natural conclusion. This, the characters stayed true to who they were, brave and determined, laced with doubt and exhaustion. They drove the story forward, influencing and rallying on countering and dispatching everyone and everything along the way. I think it was everything Chuck said and believed it was and wanted to have faith in. If left to their own devices and moral code, the best of humanity will stand up and save their world. That's a very good uh, allegory to it, Shannon. Very good. The show needed to end after season six. Someone had to say it, so uh, I'll give it to him. And now the final comment about this season here. 
The fifth season of Supernatural is easily my favorite one of the first five original seasons and overall my favorite season of the show. Considering the fact that I haven't rewatched this season since it's premiered in my country, that was about 10, 11 years ago, it has aged really well in my opinion. I also agree. It expands the lore and has a bigger uh, story arc for Sam and Dean and feels more epic than the previous four seasons. It's not just about hunting things anymore, but about destiny to determine one's fate and saving the world from a literal apocalypse. The Archangel Lucifer is easily the best antagonist who the Winchester brothers have ever faced. No villain from season uh, 6 to 15 ever came close to being as great as Lucifer. Amara is probably the best second, I would say. She was so powerful and just such this, an epic force that that's why she was such a good villain, but I get where you're coming from here and I do agree with you on that point. With the exception of Swap Meat, there is no bad episodes in Season 5 in my opinion. I also agree. Even the ones that are not as good, like Fallen Idols, are still enjoyable and entertaining to watch. Overall, I give Supernatural Season 5 a 7 out of 7. And there we go, guys. Thank you guys for your comments. Now we are going to be talking about the top 5 worst and the top five best episodes of this season. Um, I think you might be in a, a, for a surprise with the worst list. And when I do post those videos, give me your top five worst, top five best when I post those videos. I'm not going to read them, but I'd still like to see what you guys think. But hold those until I do the posting, which will be next Thursday, and it will be the top five worst, and then the top five best following the Thursday after. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this. It's I, I can't express to you how much it means to me that you guys would tune in and watch these videos every Thursday. I hope you have enjoyed your Thursdays. And I am going to be taking a little break uh, coming up soon. And I will be returning to Season 6 sometime next year. I'm still figuring it out because essentially I have to sit down and binge all of 6 and then start putting all the reviews together. So I have like a, a storage essentially uh, build up to this. But we'll see. Anyways, guys, until then, hope you liked the video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, if you guys are interested in a sweater that's going to keep you warm when it's cold out, like I said, check out Yukon Built. Link is in the description below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys for the next video.